Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing two applied algebra problems. These are some of the most difficult problems for students to solve because oftentimes setting up the problem is pretty difficult, but if you can master setting up the problem, they're generally pretty easy to solve. So let's start out with number 223. I will leave the link to the GMAT book I use in the description box so that way you can find it if you would like to, you know, practice more. So 223 says, seed mixture X is 40% ryegrass and 60% bluegrass by weight. Seed mixture Y is 25% ryegrass and 75% fescue. I apologize if I mispronounce that. Okay, so if a mixture of X and Y contains 30% ryegrass, what percent of the weight of the mixture is X? So a couple things to note. I'm going to go ahead and underline some things. So first of all, we have this mixture X, which contains 40% ryegrass and 60% bluegrass. Now we have another seed mixture that also contains 25% ryegrass and 75% fescue. So I'm going to underline that in a different color. It's important to be sure what we're dealing with. Okay, so now we want to know if a mixture of X and Y contains 30% ryegrass what percent of the weight of the mixture is X? So what we eventually want to find is what percent is X of X plus Y? So this is gonna give us our percent by weight because your composition, your total, is gonna be X plus Y and we're only looking at X. So from there, just keep that in mind that that's kind of what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and focus on the ryegrass because that's kind of what we're looking at here. So for our seed mixture X, our ryegrass, we could call that 0.4X because 40% of X is how much ryegrass it contains. So now for Y, it contains 25% ryegrass. So that's going to be plus 0.25Y. Now this together is going to equal this 30% ryegrass. So this is going to be 0.3 times X plus Y. Because again, this is the resulting mixture, which is a combination of X and Y. This 40% is only X, this 25% is only Y, but the resulting mixture is going to be X and Y. So going from there, let's go ahead and write this out, plus 0.25y equals 0.3x plus 0.3y. Now let's combine like terms, so I'm going to subtract 0.3x from both sides, and I'm going to get 0.1x is equal to 0.05y. Again, I just subtracted 0.25y from both sides. So from there, we can multiply by a factor of 10, which means we're just going to move the decimal place one point to the right on both sides. So we're going to move it to there, move it to there, and we find that x is equal to 0.5y, which is great because now we have two equations, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not necessarily two equations. We have one equation with two unknowns, but we also have this expression here. So now going back to this expression, let's go ahead and plug in 0.5y for x. So this is going to give us 0.5y over 0.5y plus y. This is going to equal 0.5y over 1.5y. Our y's are going to cancel and we are going to get 5 over 15 or 1 over 3 which is equal to 33%. So 33 of the total, which translates, if you were to change this decimal, this is equal to 0.33. So if you were to change this into a percent, remember you just move the decimal two to the right. So that's how I got this 33%. 
So again, this problem, the most difficult part is just learning how to set it up. So I highly recommend when doing word problems, take your time, read through the question two or three times if you have to, pay attention to all of the different variables, because in this case, for example, they kind of gave us, they gave us this bluegrass information here, and they gave us this uh, fescue information here that we didn't even need, right? Because all we were talking about is ryegrass. So sometimes they will do that. Sometimes they'll throw things in there to throw you off, but just be sure to focus on what you need and just go very logically step by step through the problem. So now let's take a look at a similar problem, another applied problem. Let's scroll down, number 220, I believe. Okay. So this question says, a part-time employee whose hourly wage was increased by 25% decided to reduce the number of hours worked per week so that the employee's total weekly income would remain unchanged. By what percent should the number of hours worked be reduced? So a couple of things. So we have an employee and we have two different variables. We have the wage and we have the hours, but the wage, we have a new and an old wage, and we're also going to have new hours and old hours. So it's always a good idea just to kind of keep in mind what your variables are and what options you have for each variable. So what's happening here, I'll go ahead and underline this. Okay. So we have her hourly rate excuse me, her hourly wage is being increased by 25%. So how do we model that in terms of math? We write that as 1.25W. I'm just going to call W, or I'm sorry, I'm just going to call wage W. So this is her new wage. So now she's going to reduce the number of hours worked per week. So let's just say we're going to multiply this by her new hours, and we'll just call this Let's just give this um, N for new. That's going to be stand for N equals new hours. So hours worked per week so that the employee's total weekly income would remain unchanged. And this here represents her income, her weekly income. And that's because it's her wages times her hours, right? So let's say she makes $25 an hour and she works 25 hours. To find her income, you would multiply the two. So just so you know, so that's her weekly income. This is new weekly income, even to be more specific. So now we want this to equal the same. We want this to equal the weekly income. And we'll just say old. So now we had her old wage which we can just call that W. But now we're going to change the hours. So N stood for new hours, so I'm just going to call... You know what? I'm going to give this a different variable name because I don't like this. So we're going to call this big H, and we're going to call this little h. I believe that's actually what they did in the book. So this is new hours, this is old hours. So from there, now we can go ahead and figure out it wants to know the hours, how much they should be reduced. So let's go ahead and solve this for the new hours to figure out what the relationship is between the two. So we have 1.25 WH equals WH. To solve for this big H here, we're going to divide by 1.25 W. For here, we're going to divide by 1.25 W. We're going to get H equals, these W's are going to cancel, and we are going to get h over 1.25. So that is going to equal, let's see, h equals h over, I'm going to call this 5 over 4, um, just because I know that 1.25 is 5 over 4. Otherwise, you could do 1 divided by 1.25, but I kind of find that more difficult. So this is going to equal h equals, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 4 over 5. This is going to cancel here, and we're going to get 4 over 5h, or 0.8h. So that means that the new hours are equal to 80% of the old hours. So what that means is that the number of hours worked needs to be reduced by 1 minus 0.8, or 0.2, meaning 20%. There we go. 
So again, this problem is a little bit complicated. Um, it's again important to read through it very carefully. Go step by step, try to model the words in math, and then figure out what you need to do and just follow your game plan. So I hope this was helpful. Sorry, I know I kind of switched things up with the variables there, but hopefully you guys are able to follow along. Um, if it was helpful, I would appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to my page. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and good luck with your studies.